what is respect? So I had to pull up the definition because I don't want to mislead anyone. And you can look it up for yourself. And I have to read it because I don't want to miss any of this. It says respect is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something. And it goes on to tell you, you admire someone for their abilities, their qualities or achievements. And then the second part of the definition says, it is due regard for feelings, wishes, rights, or traditions of others. Okay, so that's the definition of respect, which we're going to be talking about here today. Now, a lot of times when clients come to me, they say their biggest issue, and I've said this before, is communication or affection or, you know, um, lack of intimacy or finance, whatever. You know, there, there's so many reasons why couples believe that their relationship is going awry. And it's true. A lot of those areas are affected by the disintegration of the relationship. But the number one reason that most people have an issue within their relationship is the lack of respect or the absence of respect within their relationship. Now, respect, if you look at a relationship and you look at the four C's that I talk about, you know, commitment, communication, compatibility, and compromise, you know, all of those things cannot occur if there's no respect. And without respect, which I see as the core foundation of any relationship, you know, if you don't respect yourselves, then anybody can do you anything. That's my code. I respect myself. So therefore other people are not allowed to disrespect me. That's one of my personal codes. And then in a relationship, you have two people who came together based on love and based on mutual respect for each other's accomplishments or whatever you, 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 you admire and respect this person because, you know, there's something about that person that made you think that they were different than everybody else. There's some quality that person possessed that made you want to be with that person. And then all of a sudden you're here, you're sitting in front of me and you're like, what the, <laughs> you know, respect. Have you lost respect for your partner? Have you lost respect for yourself? Because a lot of times losing respect for yourself in a relationship can also lead to the disintegration of a relationship. Think about it. You don't respect yourself enough to take care of yourself. You don't respect yourself enough to be motivated. You don't respect yourself enough to find value, understand your value. Then you're like a sitting duck, right? You're just sitting there and then the other person sees that and they don't understand what's going on and they can't really put their, their finger around it. All they think is that you become lazy. You've become, you know, you become somebody who's a burden. You become somebody who's a hindrance and somebody who limits them. They don't understand how that progression occurred, but they can they can document that it did occur at some point in the relationship and they lose respect. They lose respect because your motivation has ceased to exist and they lose respect for you because maybe you've cheated, maybe you've stepped out of the relationship emotionally or physically and that has led to a total disintegration of the respect. How do you get that respect? How do you, how do you rebuild something that is the glue. When glue is when glue fades away, the whole fabric will 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 fall apart. So how do you get the glue back? Do you just go and buy a tube? I wish it was that easy, don't you? You can go buy a tube of respect and just infuse it into your relationship or into yourself. Yeah, we're not that technologically advanced yet. So the other thing about respect though is that once the respect is gone, then you either feel less than or the person treats you as though you're less than. There's no value. You feel not valued. And as much as you may kick against the pricks and tell the person, this is how you make me feel. And this, you're speaking to me in this tone. And you didn't always used to talk to me like this or treat me like this. You need to spend more time with me and stuff like that. It's because the person or both people are growing apart because the glue or the, the glue that held the fabric together is no longer there and you find yourselves drifting apart because there's nothing there to keep it together. And that's what I want to talk about today. You know, um, the, the biggest thing about respect and loss of respect is understanding the editor's questions, you know, not who you, you know, who, who has lost respect for you. That's not the question you need to ask. You need to ask where this respect was lost why it was lost, 
how it was lost, and then ask yourself what you need to do about it. Not doing anything like I consistently say here, nobody listens to me, some people do. You have to do something about it. Ignoring the problem does not mean the problem goes away or that there's is automatically solved. And I'm going to keep on reiterating that because a lot of people tend to do that. They see the problem. Most people are conflict averse and don't like confrontation or confronting issues. And because of that, they run in the opposite direction instead of saying, okay, this is a conflict. Let's perform conflict resolution. Let's desire and decide to resolve this issue together and face this issue as one as one and understand that even though it's happened, that we need to fix it. That's a commitment. The commitment to the relationship will should bring you back together to the place where you can problem solve and deal with the conflict. Right. But most people don't often do that. Most people run in the opposite direction because at that point they're thinking this is done. This is over. There's nothing I can do. And sometimes that's the truth. Sometimes the disrespect has gone to a place where if, I mean, if you sit on an egg for 10 years and the egg does not hatch at some point, you need to get off the egg unless somebody told you that dinosaur eggs take longer than 10 years. But typically, most eggs hatch in a, in a reasonable amount of time, not 10 years. So why are you sitting, harboring, and nursing this disrespect instead of addressing it? It makes no sense. Why, why do you let it get to this place where, oh, I know, I just answered my own question. The reason why you allow the disrespect to build and continue is because you're hoping for that resolution where you can just walk away or the other person walks away first. There's some tough cookies out there. There's some people that say, you know what? I'm not breaking until the other person breaks or they're looking for an out because they don't want to address the conflict. They don't want to deal with the confrontation. And that's the truth. But respect is the glue that holds the relationship together. Respect is what's needed in order to work on the relationship. If you don't respect the other person enough to try to make this work, then, you know, it's harder. It makes it much more difficult to approach it at some other point in time other than now. Now, how do you regain respect after it's lost? Like I said earlier, sometimes it's too late, especially depending on how long the disrespect has been going on in the marriage. You know, the four horsemen of the relationship apocalypse, you know, you started criticizing and using condescension and one person gets defensive and the other person stonewalls, meaning they, they shut down, they don't talk. I have, you know, I've, I've, I've met couples who have managed to live as roommates successfully and they ignore the other person and that works for them, but it doesn't work for everyone. Are you willing to sacrifice your happiness and sacrifice your mental health and physical well-being? Because a lot of times this produces anxiety and stress. Are you willing to do that instead of confronting the issue and finding resolve that will help you be healthier mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? That's the question. And finally, how do you, how do you get respect back, Ingrid? I, I, I can't respect him. He, he cheated on me, not once, not twice, six times, 10 times. Now, that's a whole nother conversation for another day. I will give you my thoughts on that, I promise, at some point in the future. But yeah, this person has disrespected me. They, they've treated me badly. They've, they've emotionally and mentally and physically abused me. I mean, at that point, when the disrespect is something that is so terrible to the point where you are in danger, you have to make a mental note to, to, to find the respect, the self-respect that is needed to do what is right for you, whether you're a man or woman. You have to find the self-respect needed in order to make the right judgment call in those, in those times. But for those of you who are working on your relationship and who don't want to leave this alone because there is some measure of love, there's something here worth saving and you want you to respect your partner again. And you and your partner have decided this is worth trying to put this glue back together and finding the right glue, then let's talk. Let's talk about doing it on a daily basis. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day and that's the process for rebuilding respect. You start by telling your partner or telling yourself, it's, you know, it's a mental thing and you, I need you to say out loud, I respect you for this. Find little things, little moments and little things that you can say you respect this person for. 
Do you respect them because they're a good parent, a good mother, a good father? Do you respect them because you see the effort they're putting in after years and years of your relationship struggling? Say that. Do you respect this person because they, they're a hard worker and they go to work every day and they show up and, and show out even though they don't have to? Say that. A lot of times we don't tell people the truth. We don't, we don't, play, we don't pay compliments because some, it's like teachers who don't like to give A's, right? Anybody ever had one of those teachers? My aunt, my aunt is a teacher. I'm sure she was an A. She was the one that gave A's because she was all about effort and reward. And I could be wrong. I'll talk to her later about that. But there's some people who don't want to give compliments. They don't want to give reward. They don't want to give recognition. And a lot of that is where you will find respect. If you truly respect someone, why withhold recognition and reward and the compliments? Why not tell this person how you respect them and in what area you respect them? Because the more and more you reinforce that and the more and more they hear that, the more likely the respect will grow. The more likely the respect will take over and the more likely the respect will rebuild. And that's one of the things that I want you to do. I want you to start affirming to your partner and to yourself every day, the reasons why you respect this person, the reason why, you know, you can honestly say, this is something that I value in you. This is something that I recognize. This is something that you need to know that I esteem in you, you know, whether it's skills, abilities, but more importantly, respecting them as an individual. And if you don't respect them in those areas, and if you have a challenge doing that, you know, talk to them about the things that, you know, you, that have that have developed over the years that you've lost respect for. And, and, and make a conscious decision to, to, to say the things that are in your spirit, because holding things in and not speaking those things, how can the other person know what to work on if you don't tell them? And I know, I know, I know my Debbie Downers out there. I know my people that are in relationships where they're, they're, they're challenged with someone that, you know, they've told these things to and that person refuses to do the things or acknowledge the words that they've said. Like I said, in those moments, you have to switch to self-respect and act accordingly. My name is Ingrid Felton. I hope that you found some gold nugget here today that can help you on your journey in helping your relationship become healthier and more wholesome. You know, a lot of these topics that I choose are topics that I encounter on a daily basis with my clients. And I want to share because I want you to continually work on your relationship. It is work. Relationships are work. It is not an easy walk in the park. If it was, all of us would be happy, right? All of us would have the perfect meet and all of us would have had the perfect time. But relationships, remember, when you said your vows, for those of you who have not yet, when you do say your vows as well, there's a, a part in there that says for better or for worse. Why would they say for worse if they didn't, if somebody else must have realized that relationships are so much work that you will encounter the worst? There will be moments in your relationship where the worst will occur. The worst does not have to indicate the end of the relationship in some instances or cases. The worst could just mean that this is a challenge presented to both of you to help nurture and facilitate and develop a growth and love that becomes thicker and enables that bond, that bonding through the, the sacrifices you will make individualistically and collectively. The worst is not always unavoidable. It is something that as long as you continue living and as long as, long as you continue being in a relationship, some relationships are blessed. Some people, they don't fight, they don't argue, they don't lose respect for each other. It's just peachy creamy. But understand this, always anticipate the worst and go from there. I'm not saying to live your life thinking, oh, this is a negative thing and this has to happen. What I'm saying, remember that vow for better or for worse. And if you're dealing with the worst right now, confront it, find conflict resolution for it, address it, talk about it, discuss it. And if all else fails, give me a call. <laughs> My name is Ingrid Felton. As always, thank you for showing up. Thank you for your comments and for you know liking the videos as well and for sharing the videos with family and friends. Thank you for your support. Without it, I could not continue doing this. I enjoy my work. I enjoy helping others to grow and to heal. And I will continue to do that as long as I continue to have your support. Thank you and have an amazing day. Bye-bye.